just a short video of a Nixie clock project that I've been working on for a little while now and uh, where I'm up to. So I've basically got everything working. This is just a test code for bringing the board up to check that the uh, all of the segments are working. They're uh, end on Nixie tubes. They're running at about 180 volts and a couple of way too big neons as well for the flashes for the codons on the clock. And everything's individually addressable. Um, the grey cardboard is just a, a simple um, just a mock front panel being ginger when I take these out. Should give you a bit, a bit of a view. There's two balls together in a sandwich. The bolt together. You can see the tubes there themselves, so they're end on. Okay, if I pull the power cable, it's just 12 volt DC going in. I carefully pull this. Give it a few minutes because there's some high voltage on here. Try and difficult with the camera to unplug the two boards. We'll start by looking at this one. This one's the display board, so it's got a couple of drivers on it. And these are uh, Microchip, or a company that Microchip recently bought out. They're HV5252, uh, sorry, 5222. Um, they're high voltage shift registers. Uh, they're really quite nice chips and uh, certainly a firm favourite of mine because you don't have to solder hundreds of transistors onto drive nuclear tubes. They're 220 volt, slightly higher transient suppression um, and they do 100 milliamps per pin as well so they're quite beefy devices. Um, <clears throat> I think each one, is, each one of these is 64 pins as well so um, from memory but yeah they're, they're quite good quite good devices. The, the, the clock went up to about 800 mega, uh, sorry about, 50, about 80 megahertz from memory so they're really f quite fast chips maybe it's only 8 megahertz actually but certainly well fast enough to uh, to do any kind of uh, fading effect and dimming and that kind of thing on there they've also got black blanking uh, outputs and stuff like that so that's the top layer of the board and the bottom of the board here on the bottom section of the board contains a 12 volt to um, uh, 180 volt switch my power supply here most of it's under the captain tape just to protect my fingers when I pick the board up and don't want any zapping <laughs> and there's a uh, sorry move my hand out so it focuses properly there's a DS3232 Max in Dallas chip that's a um, real-time clock it's one of the extremely accurate ones and the Arduino Pro Micro um, so I can program the thing over USB set the clock that will program the real-time chip uh, via a quick web script or a quick, quick uh, Python script or something to program the real time clock chip and then it will run happily for a, uh, so far I've got another one going for a couple of years <laughs> that, uh, that that keeps really good time so I'm very pleased with those I think they're just uh, temperature compensated as well and there's a battery on the reverse side of the board here that uh, keeps, keeps the clock running when it's not uh, powered so it's pretty simple to do it's fairly cheap to build and um, Quite a nice little unit it's nice and small I built it to uh, go on my desk at work just before the uh, lockdown <laughs> uh, happened the COVID-19 lockdown happened in uh, early 2020 in the UK and uh, since then I've not uh, not been back in the office so but uh, a couple of people were asking me about projects and stuff and I thought I'd make a quick video showing you uh, the, uh, the basis of this one <laughs> 